Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? Good morning, good morning. I hope y'all Memorial Day was uh, spectacular. I mean, if you had some money, you went out there and brought some food and got it on the grill. Me, on the other hand, you know what I'm saying? I had to pay bills this weekend, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know. Y'all want to say my, my, my holiday weekend wasn't all that, but it was, though. I still had fun with my family, though. But um, I hope you guys are uh, listening, you know, as always. Well, I am back with another podcast interview for you today. This gentleman reached out to me. He was like, lockout, man, I need to holler at you. And I was like, yo, I'm right here. What you need? Uh, this young man started off in towing. Yeah, he's from he's from my industry, the road service industry. That's what's up. Started in towing in 1987, and then he jumped right into a semi in uh, 2004. Yes, sir. We about to chop it up with this young man. I like the brain to the state. Well, I didn't get your last name, bro. What's your last name? Jeff. Will Hoyt. What, what is it? Will Hoyt. Will Hoyt. Ro- Roy. Yes, sir. <laughs> I like to bring to the stage my man Jeff Rohoy to the show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, my brother. I'm doing good, man. How you feeling? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. Well, you know, I always got to ask people how, how to pronounce their name, man, because, you know, me, you know, a lot of... I, I don't want to... You know, I don't want to offend or, you know, offend or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just that, yo, I'm not, I'm just not good with names, man. I'll be beating up people's names. Like, 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 whoa. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? All right, Jeff. So where you come from, Um, man? Where you come from? I'm I'm from uh, Painesville, Ohio, but I live in Ashtabula, Ohio right now. And I'm, uh, I'm in Illinois right now. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, young man coming up in uh, Painesville, Ohio. You you in my neck of the woods, man. You like, Painesville ain't nothing like about 15, 20 minutes away from where I'm at. Painesville used to be, right. well, actually, Painesville is still uh, my cover my coverage area for uh, roadside assistance. That's where that's where I get majority of my road calls from. <laughs> I, I, had, oh, yeah. I had a whole bunch of people calling me, like, during the wintertime. I'll say about yes. 80, I'll say about 80, 85 percent of my calls came from Painesville. Oh, been there, done that, man. I know what that's like. I feel it, man. I feel it, man. So coming up in uh coming up in Painesville, man, what what was life like coming up in Painesville? It was good, man. I, I can't complain. I mean, it's it's changed a lot now, but back back then, uh, it was good. I used to go to the skating rink all the time right there in Painesville on Walnut Street when mm-hmm. uh, the services and Freckers owned it. Mm-hmm. And uh whole family went there, you know, kind of like grew up there and a lot of people I met, met from there. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So, so Painesville coming up, uh, coming up in Painesville, what, what was, uh, it says here you was, uh, you started towing in, uh, 1987, man. So what, you know, take me back. Take me back to 1987, and what was what was towing was like back then. Man, towing was it was good then. I mean, you know, we were busy all the time. We did a lot of AAA back then, and I mean, it's still going on now. But I've been out of out of it for a while. But back then, I mean, we were busy all the time. We was always in Euclid, Ohio. We would go to Euclid, and we would be there all day long. I mean, I mean, there wasn't a street I haven't been on in Euclid and Cleveland Heights and all around that whole surrounding area. Been around there and like I said, we did we did everything. Summer, winter, didn't matter. We were busy, busy, busy. All right. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I you know, back in eighty seven, you know, that's you know, I, I was a young Jack back in eighty seven, man. But uh what was the for to- me both. for towing for towing, what was the rates like? back then you you mentioned that you you to, you told a lot for uh triple a but what was the rates was triple a was your only uh was your only contract that you was with when when you was towing 
No, we did all the police departments back then. We did East Lake, Willoughby, Manor. Um, let me see. We did some Cleveland, uh, Willoughby, Willowick, all of that. Um, the prices all varied back then. I mean, if your police calls, I think back then were like, I think they were like 65 or 75 for the hookup and then whatever, you know, the charge was for, for the storage and stuff. And then um, it's went up since then that I know of. I mean, last, last when I was towing, it was like $90 just for the hookup and five bucks a mile plus the storage. And it's, it's just gone up big time but it was it was uh it wasn't hard back then it was it was uh it was really easy you know and we we enjoyed it when i worked for uh i started out there with uh little owns towing that's where i started at man and uh i loved it i loved it loved that man he's a good guy my bad jeff yeah. my bad jeff had to that's all right had to do a little a little a little Shucking and moving over here. <laughs> <laughs> had to do a little. Uh, had to do a little. Uh, had to do a little uh, shucking and moving over here, man. Um. All, all right, right. All 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 right. So sorry about that. Technical difficulties, y'all. Te- technical difficulty. Uh. So did you did you have to have any special type of training? Or anything like that? Did you have to get your like? Did you have to go and get your get any type of special license or anything like for, like that for for towing vehicles? No, not much. Uh, it, only if you got on the uh, heavy, you know, and then you had to get your CDL. But I didn't get into it then. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, you just you learned how to do it and you learned how to do lockouts. Uh, you know, you were had training. And then you just was put on your own, and you went from there. You learn learn how to read a map book real quick. <laughs> yeah, back I, I can imagine. I, I I can imagine back in '87 you didn't have GPS back then. G, GPS uh-huh. GPS was uh, an yeah. af, GPS was an afterthought. <laughs> yes. Or before yeah, yeah, or, yeah, or, or the, before thought. <laughs> you had each county. You had to look into where you was going. You you had a little pager or. And they put it on a page of where you were going, what you were doing, and then you had to look and see where it was at, and you learned your way around pretty quick that way. So how was so reading a, come coming up from the old school, man? Tell these young jacks how how important it was back then of uh, learning how to read a map book. Oh man, that was the only way that you was getting around. I mean, unless unless you grew up in that area and you knew all the streets and everything else. You still you have to look in a map book to find out where places are because you could think you know, and you go and it's like, wait a minute, I thought this was over here. That's the first thing that you're going to say. I thought this was over here, and it's not. You have to look in that book. You have to find out exactly where you're going to learn your way around. That's the only way you're going to do it. That's the only way you're going to learn. Now coming up, now coming up from the toy industry, learning how to learning how to read a map book, all all that. All that experience uh, with with that side sort of helped you when you migrated into trucking, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I got into doing flatbed, and then it would put one on a flatbed and then put one on a wheel lift. And mostly putting on a wheel lift, kind of like pulling it around and, and maneuvering it, kind of get you going into bigger things. And then you get into doing a little bit of heavy and that's when you start towing bigger things, and then you just—I just worked my way into driving a truck, doing it that way. Okay, okay. So, so Jeff, man, so you the, towing back, <laughs> towing back then, uh, from from where you came from, and then when I started, because I I started towing, or not towing, I, I started roadside within you know the late two thousands. I say uh, two thousand and eight ish 2007 ish is when i got into the industry um Mm -hmm. you know i got into it simply by locking my keys in the car (laughs) uh young man a young man from a company called papa lock you know i called my phone 
And they sent a company called Papa Lock over and a young man came out, you know, with the long ride and and uh, got me in my, you know, got me in my vehicle. And I'm over here like, huh. I said, uh, I said, bro. Right. I said, bro, how? That's the best, best part, man. That's the best part. That's how I learned. I started out with uh, Little Lone's Towing out of Willoughby. And mm-hmm. we would go into our lot. Mm-hmm. And that's where you would learn. There would be cars there that were, were junk. You know that. You know, that's how. That's how action. I learned. I that's that's how I learned because, right. like, like, like I said, when the young man came and unlocked my car, he was like, "I, I was like, yo, how, how can I get into that?" And, uh, mm-hmm. and you know, he introduced me to the 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 Cleveland supervisor at the time, and then from there, you know, from there I got on. You know, we went to the junkyard, and uh, you know, we started we started learning there. Yeah, we we started learning yep. there. Uh being that you was towing best place to learn. Being that you was towing for a company, did did they have did they own their own junkyard or something like that? Were were you able to go in there and, you know, try to, you know, get into different cars? Yeah, they yeah, we had a lot of uh it was like their their own impound lot and then their own lot that we would bring cars to that were in accidents and stuff and people weren't coming to get or they would come and get the rest of their stuff out of it and the car was going junk and but a lot of stuff still worked so we would uh you know lock them and then work on how to get into them and how you feel for the lock and i mean there's like you know a bunch of different ways of doing it and now you know you i got this thing called the big green and a wedge and mm-hmm. I just put that in there, man. And I can pretty much just about get into everything. I mean, there's only been like one car that I know of that I couldn't get into and it was a Corvette, but it had the locks on it were like turn knob box. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't, I could, man, I could not get into that. <laughs> I, it, so that was like the only one. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, that was it. That was like the, oh. that was the only one I couldn't get into. I, Everything yeah. else, you know, is pretty easy. That that's that sounds like that that sounds like my story, man. Uh, you know, I I I can get in. I, I was sweet, you know what I'm saying. That's where the name come from, lockout man. You know what I'm saying. I was yep. sweet. I yep. got you know I you know I took you know I got in just about every car that was available, and I I kept up with you know I kept up with the years because you know as the cars changed the ways to get into cars changed. You know what I'm saying? Right. Majority of my work was done from the passenger side and nine yeah. times out of 10, it was done on the back. You know, that's where you could do the least damage on a, on a, uh, mm-hmm. on the, on the back, uh, the back door. But you know, the, uh, the passenger drawer, you know, if I had to use that, I get in that also. But, um, yeah, that's, Less got less stuff on the passenger side than it does the driver's door. Mm-hmm. And that was why we we're same thing. That's how we learned for the passenger door, less wiring, less mechanisms, and everything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, it makes it easier to do. Exactly. Exactly. To learn, not do, but learn. Exactly. And like I said, even you know, like you, there's always this one vehicle that I just can't get into no matter what i tried i did the long reach tool the 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 door mm-hmm. tool the, the 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 carter key it, it's just that one vehicle for you it was the corvette for me it was that uh it was it was uh it was a cadillac i forgot what it was i think i videotaped it but um i think i did videotape it I, I was called out to that car and it didn't have a door handle on the outside. It was like one of those sensor touch. And I, I, mm. I, I told the dude, you know, I, it was, it, it was window. It was um, what you call the painless. It didn't have no, the window was like right bump up against the, you know, against the door frame. So if I would have okay. wedged, if I would have wedged the window, it would have busted. I knew that from the rip. So I told the dude, I was like, "Yo, man, I ain't, ain't nothing I can do with this. Ain't, ain't nothing at all I can do right. with this, man." He was like, "He was like, are you sure, man? I really need to get in here." I was like, "Man, your best bet is just to 
wait in the morning, call the dealership, have them to cut you a key. And and usually cutting keys for those cars was like $200, man. That was crazy. It was crazy how much how much it cost to cut a key for 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 a car. Yeah, I, I got lucky on the Corvette, man, because the lady the lady had every all her keys, everything locked in there, and it was it was like right around the corner from her house. So I just gave her a ride home. Well, she got home. She goes, "Oh man, my keys to the house are in there." She goes, "Wait a minute." There was a window that was left open, so she went in the window, got an extra set of keys, and took it back, and she got in and took care of it that way. So that we was got a, lucky on that one. That was an easy lockout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, a good one. Man, that, that was, was a good one. that was an easy lockout, man. All right, so what made you um, what what other other than the toying, what 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 inspired you? What actually inspired you to get into trucking? You when you migrated? Um. I, I was always curious about it, and like I said, you know, I, I worked up into the heavier stuff, and um, I'm like, you know, I'm, this is getting to be too much physical work. I'm getting older now. You know, I'm not a young buck anymore, so I decided, you know, I'm going to look into driving a truck, and the company I was working for then had a bunch of trucks, mm-hmm. and he let me start moving them around and doing this and that, you know, and um he just he said you want to get your license we'll help you get your license and you can start driving our uh semis and stuff i'm like hmm. all right cool and this was with a company in painesville there fnn uh Franz truck service and towing and but they ended up going out of business now but and uh that's where i got my cdl and that's where i learned how to uh drive a semi and i just said i'm in did you did you go to school yeah. Did did you go to school for your CDL or you just you grandfathered in on your CDL? Um, I went. The only thing I didn't go to school. I only had to. I learned how to drive the truck, and then uh, they paid for my uh, to get my CDL to this uh, uh, place. I had to go. I can't remember where it's at right now. But um, they sent me out there, and and I had to do it four times, mm-hmm. and I passed it on my last one. Um, by missing two points. <laughs> oh, okay. So it was a point system you had to go by, and I passed, and that was it. I've been on here ever since then. What was what was I've been the ever since? What what was the what what was the test like in in two thousand four? Because you know, of course, I came you know I came out in t- uh twenty fifteen, so I'm I'm sure the test was totally different. Uh, between 2004 and then 2015, what what was the test like for you back back then when you when you test out? Because since you didn't go to school, you know we when I went, you had to get certified, you had to do your, get certified hours, you had to have so many hours on the on the skills pad, you had to know your pre trip within 15 minutes and all like that. How how was it how was it for you back in uh 2004 that you didn't even have to go to school or get certified for anything? What was the testing like? Um, the testing, the kind of, as far as the pre trip goes, it was it was kind of basically the same. You know, the 15 minutes outside, 15 minutes inside, and you got a half hour to do the whole pre trip. That's outside inside, and it wasn't hard to do. You you because you studied the book that's all we did we studied the book to learn how what this was and the guy said if you don't know what it is just point to it i'm like okay okay i'm just started pointing to this pointing to that and feeling this and feeling that you know and he's like all right you did good you know and then um the driving you did your maneuverability in the yard there and they had an automatic so you got to drive an automatic back in the day it was automatic in 2004 Yes. Okay. Yes. It was an automatic that we got to use. And the only thing that the guy ever said was, don't make me jerk around in my seat. And that was it. <laughs> that was it. We drove around the block, over some tracks, uh, made a turn, and came back to the yard, and that was all. It parked it, and he said, all right, let's go inside. And that, Did- that was all he said, and we went inside, and that was he stamped my stuff and went and got my license. Did he restrict your license if you drove? I mean, since you drove an automatic, 
No, no, he just no. See, back then there wasn't such a thing as you either an automatic or you're a stick. Okay. And now, not like like today. Oh, I can't drive a stick. Well, you're certified for only an automatic. Right. Back then, you it didn't matter. You know, either you drove a stick or you drove it automatic. Didn't whatever you got your CDL. Okay. That was it. So how? So you? So uh, I'm assuming you you knew how to drive. A manual, considering the fact that you was moving, you know, moving semis where you worked at, right? Right, right. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. But it was just, uh, it was just. Yeah, as soon as I, mm-hmm. yeah, as soon as I got out of that and got my license, went back to work, I was right back in the uh, um, manual. So okay, it was like no big deal. Okay, so back then, back then, was you taught how to, you know, flow gears and all like that, or was you a double clutcher? No, I learned how to float gears um, when I was towing, riding with somebody. They would they would show me. I would pay attention to what they were doing, mm-hmm. and if I didn't know, I'd ask him. And mm-hmm. there was a kid that I rode with, man. His name was uh, Greg Zupan, mm-hmm. Craig Zupan, and uh, he um, he showed me. He says you just keep your RPMs around seventeen hundred, and he says you float your gears right in. He says the only time you really need to use the clutch is when you stop, take off, or if you're in traffic. And that's, you know, what he taught me and I watched him and then he said, here, you come over here and you do it. And I mm-hmm. didn't have my CDL then, but he said, don't worry about it. You know, you're in a tow truck. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I did it, you know, and I learned how to do it from that. And it was great. So from, I was uh, like, man, I can do this. So from, uh, 2004 to the, the, the now, uh, 16 years later, uh, with within within your 16 year career in trucking, man, what what was what what was life like for you out there? What would what, what some of the you seen any of the horror stories? Uh, what what was life like for you during your 16 years? Um, but it's it's been good. I haven't really seen um some horror stories. I mean, not. In trucking, anyway. Um, <laughs> how about how about how, how about towing? How about how about towing? What were some of the horror stories uh, in towing? We had uh, we had a few bad ones. We had uh, um, we we had a real good one one time. That's right down the street from our lot. I was working night shift, and me and this other guy was sitting there in the office talking with dispatch. And we got a call about an accident right up the street, so we jumped in our trucks and took off and went up there before anybody else got there mm-hmm. and the car was it what happened he was coming down about 20 he's going too fast and there's a dip in the road there and he lost control mm-hmm. and hit a telephone pole on the passenger side and there was a girl that was sitting there and well she hit the pole with her head and uh the car split in half and she was laying over in his driveway dead and the car, uh, the front end of the car was over across the street in this parking lot, and the kid was up walking around, you know. And I mean, he was okay, mm-hmm. but when we got there, um, he jumped back in the car and act like he couldn't move and stuff like that. Well, we come to find out the girl that died was with this guy. She was married to one of the truck drivers, the tow truck mm-hmm. drivers that was there, mm-hmm. and they had just had another baby. Mm. And she was pulling around on him, and then wow. that happened. Wow, that's, that's yeah. That man, was that's, one of the bad ones that that's, happened. That's, that's a sad one right there. Ooh. We had yeah. um, we had another one on the freeway. Uh, the girl was drunk, or yeah, she was drunk and lost control of the car, hit the wall, flipped it over on its roof, and she had her sunroof open. Needless to say, that was not a pretty sight. Now you know, in towing, in, in towing, we we, well, not me because you know I was on the I was on the soft side of 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 the industry. You know, lockouts, tire change, mm-hmm. fuel deliveries, and stuff like that. But on but on the hard side of things, on the towing side of things, I mean, I'm sure you guys came up on some some horrible accidents that that uh oh, that yeah. y'all that y'all came up on was was the response have you ever came up on an accident that that um that 
that really like turned you, you know, that made you some feel some kind of way? Um, not, not really, because you kind of get used to it after being around it for so long. I mean, each one is different, you know, and I think the worst one, the worst one, the one that I think that I remember the most was one that where a uh, guy hit a tree and on, again, on the passenger side and they couldn't get the driver out mm-hmm. and I had was on scene. I had a backup in there and they told me that I had a split boom truck. Then they told me to split them and pull them out because they, if they can't get the guy out. I got to pull the car apart. So, um, that was, that was pretty, pretty bad there. That, that when, I mean, I was there and I'm holding this guy's IV bags while they're trying to get his legs out from underneath the dashboard. <sighs> You know, and I'm standing there and listening to this guy screaming and crying and in all kinds of pain and stuff, you know, but you get, you get so used to it afterwards. Mm-hmm. I mean, even burnt ones where you still kind of smell, you get used to it, you mm-hmm. know, and it's like, mm-hmm. some people are like, no, not me. Mm, I couldn't do it, but it's, yeah, you, you can. That's something, that's something that you have to get used to if you're going to continue the job. Don't yeah. You? So. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's something you're gonna have to get used to. All right, so let's jump back into the, let's jump back into trucking, man. So, uh, what what company you started out with, uh, back in the day? Uh, you started in trucking in 2004. So back in the day, did you did you have to go out with a trainer or or anything like that? Yeah, I went out with a, when I went with a um trainer, um to learn how to do the paperwork not so much to drive but learn the paperwork and how how you how the business operated Mm -hmm. and it was with a dump truck company and but it was still a tractor trailer wasn't just a straight truck it was a tractor trailer okay um dump so i I went with that for a while and then we jump over in the flatbed and we do that for a little while just to learn how things went there and then then i went um that was kind of like local and stuff. And then I went over the road with rail. That was my first really trucking company. Okay. I was with was rail and I was with a guy for four weeks and I don't know, man, he kind of taught you if you paid attention, he kind of taught you, but then, you know, he, he didn't, you know, you had to kind of learn on your own, but you really had to pay attention and, and, try to watch everything that was going on and learn what he was telling you to the best that you can. And, um, that's how I really got kind of over the road there with, with rail. Okay. So, uh, with, uh, with rail, how how long you was with them? Oh, I was only with them for 89 days. (laughs) They said that I wasn't doing my logs right. Back then we had log books. We didn't have Qualcomm and all that. We had log books. Right. And they kept saying that I was doing my logs wrong. And I said, the guy that was teaching me wasn't teaching me right on how to do the logs. I kept telling that. And they oh. said, well, we're going to have to let you go. What? You know, I'm like, whatever. Wait yeah, a minute. Said, wait, wait. Let you go because- well, the, 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 trainer, <laughs> the trainer didn't train you right on how to properly fill out a log book. You and right. and they let he you and they and late and they let you go. They didn't give you the opportunity to come in there and and talk with safety, so somebody there in safety could show you how to properly uh, do a logbook. Or they or no, they, they was they like or they was like you since you're the quote unquote professional truck driver, you should already know that. They let me go because, like I said, it was my 89th day, and if I would have stayed 90 days, I would have been able to collect unemployment. So they let me go. So they didn't have to do that. Wow. And I was like, you, I said the same, I said different words, but I was like, <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Me. I can Are imagine. You, you I can't can put imagine. me with somebody else. You can't show me what to do, you know, and, and let me see what I'm doing wrong. And they was like, no, we're going to, we're going to let you go. Cause you can, you know, you're, um, it's a violation against our company. Wow. That's I was like, Whatever, man. That's so I, went, crazy. I went back to driving a dump truck again. Okay, okay. So I went back. You you, you went back. You same went. Thing. You went back to your comfort zone, pretty much. Yeah, 
yeah, I went back to driving a dump truck again, and I did the same exact thing. Never had a problem. Did you have to? Never had a problem. Did you have to do logs, uh, log book in the dump truck, or no? Yeah, we had to do log books then, and um, when I was OTR, we did we did you know that's like I said, it was all way before the crawl count come out. And I only used one log book. I, I did. I didn't use two or three like some guys. They said, mm-hmm. oh, man, I used two logs. Well, that's on you. I'm using one. <laughs> so I'm still learning. I'm new, you know, so I'm only using one. Okay. Oh, you'll use two or three after a while. I'm like, nah, I don't think so. Nah, you want to stay You want to stay legal, man, because when you start doing it, right. when, co- was- when you start coyoteing, uh, coyoteing and, uh, mm-hmm. and, and outlawing, then that's where all the problems come into play, man. And you you don't need that. That's you don't right. need that as a new driver back then. No, no. Then, like I said, I was still learning. So, you know, I went back there to the dump truck, and I stayed there like eleven months, a year and a half, something like that. And uh, then I went back out to uh, over the road again. Um, just money just wasn't right at the dump company. You know, it was just you really had to work hard to get it and it just it wasn't enough you know i mean you're bringing home what, three four hundred dollars a week what was not gonna make it what now that you mentioned the money what what was the money what what was the money like in towing uh back then i, I know you told me that you know some companies you know get you know they, they get they you know of course they get they contracted whatever but how, was you was you on by the hour or was you like a percentage or something like that? When I first started with the towing, it was hourly. Okay. And then his, the owner's father-in-law told him, you know, you're spending out uh, too much money and not bringing in enough. You're going to have to change the hourly over to uh, commission oh, okay. or percentage. Well, he decided to go commission. Mm-hmm. And you still work the same amount of hours, pretty much, but your pay was like cut way down. Wow! I mean, when hourly, you know, I was bringing home eight, nine hundred dollars a week. Okay. Going. Okay. Okay, and then when it cut down to the salary, um, it went uh it went to like three. Four, Ooh, five, and that's, that's about it. Oh, that, yeah. that's so ugly. It was, a, it was a big cut. Now, yeah. and yeah, then, it's... then it switched over to uh, percentage. You make like twenty-eight uh, percent, and that's when it started getting even worse. You know, that's Ooh. when you that's when you started getting down to the three hundred. And staying around the three twos and threes, and I was like, nah, I you, can't, I'm done. I nah, can't you, do this you couldn't do that. You you couldn't do that. I mean, you know, the price, the the cost of living back then wasn't all that. I mean, it wasn't that as bad as it is now. But still, three hundred right. three hundred dollars. Right. You you came down from eight hundred to you. That's five hundred dollar loss right there, man. That's how yeah. you going to live on yeah. three hundred dollars. Still work the same amount of hours, and still working and the same amount the same of hours. And- yeah, I'm doing the same thing. I mean, nothing changed as far as that went. You were still doing everything, you know, and a lot of people didn't like AAA because it didn't pay enough. Right. But you have you can't look at it that way. You had to look at the more I do, the more I'm going to make on it. Yeah, because that AAA. Way that I, that's how I lived it. AAA was the one that was bringing in the business pretty much, right? Right. Because right. that's that's how it was for that's how it was for me back then when I when I worked you know when I had AAA for a little bit they was the only ones that was bringing in the business and I was getting I was getting like a contracted uh, contracted percentage uh, when mm-hmm. I did when I did when I went on my own and did uh, AAA but when I worked it for this you know Pop a Lot it was like he would actually show me that the company would give him like let's say like $80 and then I mm-hmm. would get I would get like maybe like 30 35% of that $80 you know what I'm saying right. so that's that's how I, that's how I made my money through uh through them man that's yeah and you had to hope that you kept busy Ooh. 
That's why so I said would add up. That's so why. Make, yeah. That's why I said uh, winter time, white gold, <laughs> white gold. As soon yep. as that yep. snow hit the ground, that's that's when that's when the phones start ringing. Woo! Oh yeah! Oh Woo. yeah! So oh, yeah. if that, that was that was like your best time. If you, was, it if, was your best time and worst time all at the mm-hmm, same time. Mm-hmm. You know, we but, had a lot of tire changes we had to do, and especially if you did down at uh, Euclid General down there on uh, Lakeshore, mm-hmm. where it was all wide open, mm-hmm. and it was freezing, raining, snowing, icing, and you had to change the tire, and lug nuts didn't want to break. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, <laughs> yeah. I feel you. I That's feel you. Days. I feel you. you know, right? That is the old days. I mean, <laughs> I still got, yep. I still got my company, but like I said, I'm a, uh, I'm a semi driver, so you know, I uh, migrated into that. Right. Um. So, so when you definitely when you got into semi trucks, the money definitely was a little bit better than what it was when you was towing. Yeah, it was a lot of less, uh, less strenuous, you know, and um. You had to, it's a whole different mindset as far as driving. I mean, okay, you're, you're driving, what, big deal? No, it's not. It ain't nothing like that, man. It, it, trucking, I've always told everybody, man, it, it's got to be something you want to do or it ain't going to work. Mm-hmm. It's got to be something you, you want to do or it's just not going to work for you. You know, you can't be out here, you know, like half these guys nowadays, you know, I want to work five days or four days be home on the weekends and take home eight nine hundred dollars it doesn't work that way mm-hmm. you know and and like i said you know it's a whole different mindset you know you, you're driving but you have to pay more attention because you're holding bigger equipment you're holding more weight you know and you just you know you, you just got you got to pay attention man so do I, how, how many um how many miles that you that you racked up uh that you racked up through how many companies before you got to where you at now? Oh my god. I know I know I've got over a million miles with all the companies that I've been with. I've been with a lot of different companies because of paid changes and hour changes and my, and stuff like that. Uh, so I've been with different companies, but most of all the companies I've been with, man, I've been with you know, two years, mm-hmm. pretty much. Every, just about every company I've been with, just about two years, and did the highs and lows. And I know I've got over a million miles in in all my years. Okay. You know, not with just one company, but within all my years. Okay. Okay. What was uh? What was out of all the companies you wrapped out with? What was the what was the con or what was the pro? What was the best company that you, that you think out of all the companies you work for, what was the best company that you worked for? Um, I would have to say the best company I worked with, uh, it would have to be Hogan trucking. Oh, okay. 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 I didn't. I didn't expose on Hogan. Okay, why? Uh, why? 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 Why will Hogan be? Why will Hogan be considered your your best company? Because they they treated me good. My I had a great dispatcher. You know, I I, did, I had a great dispatcher there, and um, he gave me the miles. But I mean, they're up and down. You know, you got your slow times and good times. But um, I pretty much ran just about everywhere. I mean, I've been in all the states through all my years. I've been in all every state, northeast, south, and west. And um, they they just they just treated me good. The medical was was good, you know. And um, their I gotta say, man, their yard in um, Bridgeton, Missouri, Earth City, um, eighty five Corporate Woods Drive. Mm-hmm. That is one nice yard. I mean, they have got nice fuel pumps, and when you park and you go inside, there's a nice driver's lounge. They just redid the bathrooms in there with the showers, free laundry. I mean, and everybody there always said hi, was very nice. I didn't have one mean person there, you know, at all. 
Okay. So uh, to me, you know, you were, you were, you were treated like a person, you know, but things happen, you know, and I had, uh, some medical issues while I was out and, um, they had to come get the truck and I had to do some things to, uh, get back into it and it didn't, didn't suffice. Work out. And so I had to go someplace else. All right. All right. So that was, so Hogan considered, uh, in your opinion, the best. So now other than rail, <laughs> what was, uh, what, what, what you consider the worst company? What's the con? What's the worst company you worked for? The worst company I worked for, I would have to say, um, I think it would be besides rail, uh, her back. Her oh stop it. Stop <laughs> it, bro. I got yeah. I got uh I got a young lady that's uh set to come on today to uh to debunk some uh she wants to she wants to clarify uh some things about Hershback, but what what you got to say, bro? Well, they put me on as a non rehire, let me put it that way. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, you guys, what had, they went against their rules, okay? And you signed the paper for their rules, okay? Now, their thing is you're out a week, you're home a day, okay? And this is when I started staying out five, six weeks, but I would only take four days at home. I wouldn't take the five. I would only take the four days at home, being out five weeks. Okay. And they said, well, we can't have the truck sitting that long. I said, these are your rules. They're not mine. I didn't make them up. I said, and I signed the paper. Well, we can't do that. I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you. They said, well, if you continue to do it, you know, we're going to, um, we're going to have to figure something out. You're going to have to, uh, change, stop being out so long, you know, and I what? said, why do I got to change just to, just to satisfy you? Why do I got to change what I want to do? And they're like, well, if it seems, if it's going to be a problem, we're, we can always come, we're going to have to come and get the truck and let you go. I said, you know what? So trucks in my driveway, uh, trailers parked down the road against the wall. I said, you can come and get it. Mm. Mm. And they said, we're going to get you for abandonment. I said, you can't. He said, you called me. And you told me you're coming to get the truck. I and didn't call you and leave the, or leave the truck nowhere. And you're not. Said, you can't get me for abandonment. And you're not abandoning the truck. The truck is right there, like, no. with you. Like, yeah. you you are still with right. the truck. Right it, ain't like, it ain't like you took the truck home. Uh, You took the truck to a truck stop and then went home and just left Cleaned the truck nothing. there. The truck is with you. Right. So how am I? In, how how right. are you abandoning the truck? That's the same thing that I told them, and they didn't have an answer for it because they knew I was right. You got to so did they you didn't get me for that? Did you did you when you when you left Hirschbach? Did you make sure that they didn't put none of that on your DAT report? Oh yeah, oh yeah. On my DAC report, I got my, I got copies of my DAC report. And not not any one of them say anything about abandoning the truck. Oh, okay. The only thing that Hirschback just said was not for rehire, not eligible for rehire, mm. and that's it. But I did get a phone call from them. Um, <laughs> uh, we're looking for drivers. I'm like, nah, you got me down as not for rehire. Well, we can relook that. I said, no, nope, that's all right. <laughs> I'm like, forget it, yeah. Jeff, man, not if, gonna happen. if you could turn back the clock, man, if you if you can go back, would would you would you would have got into the trucking industry if 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 with all that stuff that you know now that you've been in, you know that you've been in for sixteen years? I'm I'm correct, sixteen years, right? Yeah, you, you've been yeah, in it sixteen. It'll be yeah, sixteen years this year. You, you you've been in it sixteen years. Would you go back? And would you would have would you would have got into the industry knowing what you know now? Um, yeah, I just would have made better choices. I just would have made better choices. I, I would have went with the right companies off the off um, the back. The one one that I wanted to get into, um, I can't get into because I have a uh, truck accident. And okay. it's a no fault truck. I mean, there was no citations, no tickets, no nothing on it. 
but they it's, said I've got to wait five years. So five now, years. you know, I've got to wait, and that was with WFX. That's uh, what I wanted to get into. Man, um, Jeff, man, what, what happened? What what happened? Or I mean, you don't you don't have to go into details because I know. No, it's I, cool. I, I don't know. Me. I know. I know a truck accident, man. You know, changes. You know what I'm saying? Changes you. So, uh, um, what what I happened? Was going on a, I was going to pick up a. I was on a dump truck. It was they, we only had day cabs there, mm-hmm. and um, it was like four or five o'clock in the morning. Um. February, January, February 14th, mm-hmm. uh, 80s, no, 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 uh, I don't remember when, now it wasn't 80s, it was 2000, 2000, it might have been 2004 or five, something like that, mm-hmm. maybe, no, 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 it was 16, it was 16, yeah, well anyway, I was getting off this ramp, I was getting off this ramp, and there was a, a pickup truck, like an F-350, that was parked there on the side of the road. And it had a plow on the front. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't parked where easy you could, you could get around. Uh, the rear end of the truck was sitting way out in the, in the road. And they had streetlights there, but the streetlights were off. Mm-hmm. For some reason, they were not, and it was real dark. And I came around that corner, and by the time I seen it, it was too late. And I hit the the rear end of it, mm-hmm. and it ripped the cab off the chassis, flipped over three times, and landed in the snow. Wow. And um, I was like, "What the hell, man?" You know, I mean, I was okay. I wasn't hurt. Mm-hmm. wasn't hurt or nothing but at that at that second there i couldn't get out and this kid came running over there and he knew who i was and i knew who he was afterwards and um the back window had popped out so we just pulled that out and i crawled out that way and then uh police fire truck ambulance everything everybody all showed up you know and they're like you all right you all right i'm like yeah i'm fine man you know and they're like how did you survive that? I've seen the whole thing. You put that thing right over three times, man. I'm like, oh, I'm all right. I ain't hurt. That's uh, that's a blessing. And they that's was a just blessing. like, and they was, and I looked at the, the truck, and it was way down in the ditch, all tore up. Oh, and here wow. come to find out, it belonged to the road department. Some girl was driving it. It had a flat tire, so instead of her pulling off and up way off the road where she could have pulled it. She just stopped it right there. Wow. And I was the unlucky one who hit it. And a bunch of people went by, but nobody, we had CBs and everything. Nobody was hollering about it being there or nothing. Nobody said anything about it. And I was the unlucky one who hit it. And I mean, I didn't get no points on my license. No, it was a no fault accident. That was it. And but still, it was like, okay, you know, everybody go home, no injuries. But still, you know, considering and, that it was an accident. And it and they still looked at it as as an right accident. because it's on my uh, it's not on my DAC report it's on my um was that that uh, PSP PS yeah it's on there and it'll come off in five years they said so I gotta wait wait the we'll accident the accident they put on your PSP comes off in five years I thought it comes I thought an accident comes off in three or two for that matter. But this, they said, they said, because what, well, what happened? Okay. I didn't get injured, but they took me to the hospital because they said I was, I was complaining of shoulder injury. It showed my shoulder hurting, but I don't remember. So they took me to the hospital anyway to check me out and make sure I was okay. Um, you know, cause I had CDL and stuff. Right. So they had checked me out and stuff, you know, and I just, I did seen a red mark on my shoulder, which was just a bruise from hitting From the seatbelt. It had and to be from the seatbelt. Yeah. yeah, probably, you know, and that was it. That was it. I mean, there was no, they, I mean, I got out, I walked out of there, you know, and mm-hmm. um, I was off work for three, four days and um, got assigned another truck and went right back to work and just, you know, kept on going. Like, you know, well, you know wow. nothing wrong, so I'm good. So they put that, <laughs> so they put that on your PSP because you went to, you, you went to the hospital? 
Yeah. So they said it goes, it comes off after, well, if you have to wait five years. It does, I don't know if it comes off. You said you have to wait five years. But that's, that's just, all they told me. But that's just five years with that company. I, obviously, you, you are working yeah. with another company that, that sort of, that sort of kind of sort of exactly. overlooked that. Yeah. Oh, okay. And right okay. now I'm with I'm with Big C now. So. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that's is 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 that the plan for you? Uh, rocking out with this current company and then go with WFX or you 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 continue? I'm not sure. I gotta see. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to stay here. I'm gonna see how this works. I mean, so far it's been good. I've been running, you know, and they they're keeping me running, you know. Um. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh I'm gonna see how this works out. You okay. know, I mean, I can't complain right now. Like I said, I've only been here two weeks, and um, it's it's been good. I got you know pretty good dispatch. I mean, they kind of get confused a little bit and who's mm-hmm. doing what, you know, mm-hmm. and whatnot. But other than that, you know, they they they're a good company so far. Who's uh how 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 has it how has it been for you do uh through C nineteen so far? Um, actually, uh it hasn't bothered me because I was locked up in my house for uh I was out of work for two months. Mm-hmm. So I was kinda of like stuck in my house, um waiting on things to get cleared to go back to Hogan, but it just didn't happen. So that's when I started searching and uh, I was watching a lot of your podcasts and seeing who you were talking to and what was going on with them. And uh, somebody else had called me and said, Hey, you know, I know this, this company here, um, check them out. So I checked them out on Facebook and uh, YouTube and stuff and liked everything that they had to say. So I decided, well, let me go check them out. All right, man. All right. That's what's up, man. Well, I I am glad that uh that you reached out to me, man. Thank you very much. I I appreciate that that you uh that you reached out to me uh to chop it up, man. I I am I am damn glad that that you are here after after what sound as a horrific accident man i gotta give you a round of applause for that you know what i'm saying Thank so you, it, it is a it is a blessing uh that you that you was able to walk away with just minor injuries and and here to talk about it you know what i'm saying you know a lot of right. a lot of us drivers you know that that been in the accidents or that has been in the accidents some of them can't walk away from it some of them is you know it's it's kind of horrific and for you to walk away from yours man that's that is a that is a hell of a blessing man like i said before i do appreciate you coming on man you know chopping it up with me taking the time uh having me to getting to know you i really appreciate that man you are welcome, brother, man. I appreciate talking to you, man. I love it, man. All right, all right. All right. So this is my yeah. man. This is my man Jeff right here. Uh truck driver extraordinaire for 16 years. You know, he, we both got something in common. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the road service industry. That's where we both came from. So it was a it was a pleasure talking to you, man. It was a pleasure talking to you. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with me. Just like Jeff did, it's uh, it's easy to reach out to me. You can hit me up by the phone number, 216-600-2090. You can hit me up in the Gmail. That's lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can come and hit me up in the Instagram. Make sure you subscribe. To listen to this podcast on your favorite podcast platforms, it is located everywhere. If you have iHeartRadio, Google, uh, uh, Google, Apple, just type in Lockout Men and boom, there it is. Just pick out pick out the episode you want to talk, I mean, that you want to listen to. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. This is my man, Jeff. We appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening and watching. And uh, on that, me and Jeff, 
We are gone. That accident, man. I, I was, I was kind of wondering when you, when you mentioned the accident, because you know, like some companies, they, they tell you like you can't have an accident on you know you can't have more than like two accidents within you know two year period or three year period but that's like that so i'm I'm assuming that's different between different companies though right right and that was my only accident in all my years so you know it was a no-fault accident and that's how they looked at it is a no-fault right you didn't get you didn't get citations you didn't get no tickets or nothing like that huh no, nope. Didn't, didn't get nothing out of it, man. And, and um, like I said, it wasn't on my DAC report. There's no points on my license for it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's everything that they looked at. And but let me as ask far you. As I know, you know. What I mean, that's, but let me let me ask you this right quick. Uh, let me ask you this on on that. Uh,